Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health, and today we're bringing you another episode of Science Powered Fitness. This one's going to be on the drawing in maneuver. Now, this was a, a term uh, for an exercise that was really kind of nebulous to me. It was really hard to, to visualize what we were trying to get out after this or how to do this. And really, it's about using this inner unit of muscles that we talk about a lot on this channel that supports the segmental control of the spine. So that's typically, again, associated with the transverse abdominis, this innermost unit. It's a corset muscle, and it's a pretty cool muscle in the way that it's organized. It's polygonal in nature, so it's broad and it sweeps around the entire cavity of your abdomen. It tethers back to the thracolumbar fascia. So when you contract it, it pulls the ribs down, pulls the pelvis under or up, and it actually compresses the spine and brings the back into extension. So oddly enough, it rocks the hips, but also makes the back extend. So we use it to keep upright and helps us maintain our balance and posture. So we wanted to show you how this drawing in maneuver helps to engage that TVA so we have better stability before we initiate motion. So the idea here is that if I breathe in, and that's gonna be represented by this blue ba uh, balloon, and the diaphragm expands, it pushes out on the thorax and fills up these chambers called the mediastinal chambers. And now that expands the ribs and that pressure from the diaphragm pushes downward on the viscera. So this, this red balloon represents the organs. Now as that pressure pushes down on the organs, it stretches the abdominals. So remember that the diaphragm is antagonistic to the abs. So as you get descending pressure from the, the lungs into the abs or into the viscera, the passive stretch tone of the abdominal wall must be sufficient to support that, or otherwise the hips tips down inferiorly and the back goes into hyperextension, and then we lose our base of support. So our center of mass goes behind us and we start to list forward, and that's how we end up with these upper cross and lower cross imbalances through our structure. Now, what we want to do is maintain the abdominal tension as that visceral distribution of force goes down and forward. That's why they call it a drawing in maneuver because you're literally taking the TVA and you're pushing the organs dorsally or behind you, posteriorly, and that actual posterior pressure elongates the thoracic, it decouples the spine, helps with circulation, blood flow, decoupling of the vertebral segments, again, health of the discs, blood flow and circulation passively oriented with that, again, intrathoracic expansion. And that's only provided by the transverse abdominis and the ability to maintain that abdominal tone. So I'm gonna use Russ here today, he's gonna be a, a backup. He's been lovely enough to begrudgingly do this, just joking. No, he's gonna show you how to do a TVA hold. So he's gonna lay on his back, and this is called a supine 90-90, so he's gonna bring his legs up into 90 degrees. Now again, his abdominals, his abs, they're flexors of the lumbar. Now he's got his superficial ones, so there's a tendency towards using external oblique and rectus, and we have to distinguish how to get in and use the inner unit before we tap into the outer unit. So a way to do that really easily is by getting into the reserve volume of your respiratory cycle, and that means you have to get all the air out of your lungs. So what he's going to do is he's going to breathe all the air out until he can't vibrate the vocal cords. And at the very end of that breath cycle where he can't talk, notice that his pubic bone gets rocked under and it proximates to the xiphoid. That's how we hold the abdominal tone. Now hold the abdominal pressure and breathe in. As he breathes in, he's not breaking through his ab tone and he's getting intrathoracic pressure, creating three-dimensional circumferential expansion of his thorax. That's how he's getting air into opposite chambers of his trunk that he's not used to, and it provides for the upward pressure that decouples his spine and provides for that passive reinforcement of the disc's position. Now again, he's leading with his neck here, so we're gonna cue him on that. He's gotta support his head. If you guys do this and your neck lurches forward, it normally means that your superficial neck flexors are overactive. So you would want to put a pillow underneath the neck so you don't strain the neck. And once again, you would get to the bottom of the breath with that reserve volume. It takes about six seconds. Hold the pressure and then breathe in without losing the ab tone. When you do that, you won't bellow out the ab wall. It'll be held back, hence the drawing in. So as he breathes out, it'll naturally depress towards the table as he squishes the organs back. So my friends, that's what's called a drawing in maneuver. There's various ways to do that. He didn't have to lift his legs up. That required a good deal of control there. 
We want to make sure it's symmetrical so we're not listed to one side. We have often lateralized imbalances in our core musculature associated with altered breathing pattern. So remember, there is um, a need to support the inner unit before we get to the outer unit. Okay? And the first thing we want to do is this drawing in maneuver or learning how to engage the transverse abdominis, which again is central to our stability. It's part of what's called the active subsystem or the passive control active subsystem. And these are the little muscles that support spinal stability before we would wrap it with externals and then diagonally move the limbs in a cross body pattern. So again, ambulatory pattern 101. Questions on any of this, guys, reach out to us, admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. One more time, this is running with fluid, saying your body's designed to move, so stay in motion. We'll see you next time.